Okay, One Piece chapter 721. Oda sure as hell knows how to end on a cliffhanger, man. Ooh, I think I like Rebecca now. I, I was, I was kind of on the fence. I was kind of on the fence, man. I thought maybe she was just going to be a character used for fan service. I mean, look at her outfit. And the fact that Oda's already doing SBS corners and saying like, yeah, you won't believe what's under her loincloth. <laughs> like, I thought she was going to be fan service. But looks like she might actually be a badass. Looks like she might actually be a badass. I like this. I like this a lot, man. I like I like the backstory. You know, you guys know this about me, right? Like, if you got, like, the tragic backstory, if it's done right, <laughs> oh, man, I just love the character. Like, I, I like the more tragic the backstory, the more I love it. The more I love it. That's, like, the quickest way to get to me, right? That's the quickest way to get to me because I, I just love characters overcome hardships. So the fact that she is the princess of the former king like the former regime right like the the, the former people before Doflamingo took in right the fact that she's the princess mm, that is beautiful that is beautiful storytelling right there man that is that is I, I'm in love like I'm legit in love now like I think I might I might say I might say like some blasphemous right I might say some blasphemous Oh, I had to say, I had to do a prayer and say my Hail Marys for a second, okay? I think I might like Rebecca more than Nami now. I think I might like Rebecca more than Nami. You know, like, Nico Robin being the bookworm is sucks sexy as hell, right? But I think I might like Rebecca more now. I think I might like her more. I don't know, man. I got to see how she handled this right here. got to see how she handled it. You know, I might, I, I might switch from Team Nami to Team Rebecca, baby. But, <laughs> Team Becky. But, no, nah, like, on the real, though, right? On the real. Like, when you get the backstory and you find out that like when Doflamingo did the uprising and overthrew everything that happened, like overthrew the king and start hunting down everyone of nobility and everyone who had any connection. And if you see her mother, her mother, Scarlet, all of a sudden she's like, OK, we got to run. Rebecca, you don't move from this spot. I'll go get you something to eat. And she literally dies in order to bring her daughter food. And that's when you find out that like Thunder Soldier, you know, his name's on the uh, on the wanted poster in this chapter, but Thunder Soldier brings Rebecca's mother to her. So I'm guessing you know, he was somebody who served under the former king and everything got turned into a, sol into a toy soldier. And I'm guessing he probably lost a leg or something. So that explains that. But he brings Rebecca's mother back to her. And right when she gets ready to start crying, right? Or she gets ready to start crying. He just shoves the bread in her mouth and keeps his hand over to stifle the crying because Doflamingo's men are, are looking for her. And he's just like, oh, there, there's blood trail here going up the stairs. Okay, they got to be around here somewhere. And it's just like, oh, my God, this is like what happened with Nico Robin. I know somebody's like, wait, you like tragic backstories. Why do you throw all the shade at Nico Robin? Because I know it gets on you guys' nerves. That's why. I don't mind Nico Robin as a character, man. I just I just troll because I know that you guys really like her character a lot. And so I say that to say, like, the whole thing of her mom dying for bread and everything reminds me of John Valjean from uh, Les Miserables, where... You know, he went to jail for stealing bread in order to feed his family. You know, it's, it's a similar thing. It's a similar thing. And what I really like, what I really like about that is when you just take into consideration the fact that Rebecca was this innocent child who had nothing to do with anything. Now, all of a sudden, she's, she's being hunted, just like Nico Rob. That's a very nice parallel there. Now, the other thing, too, the other thing, too, that's, you know, pretty, pretty interesting, pretty telling is Doflamingo. I, I'm going to call bullshit on this. Doflamingo seeing like the last kingdom did all these other things. And the reason I'm going to call bullshit is we know this dude is a pirate. We know this dude is one of the seven warlords. And we know what Crocodile did. Crocodile was so in Caesar descent and was doing underhanded stuff. It wouldn't surprise me if Rebecca's grandfather, the former king, was a very loving king or whatever. And Doflamingo just did stuff behind the scenes in order to overthrow everything. 
it wouldn't surprise me if that was something like the case. Because, you know, what you got to understand, like, when it comes to toppling kingdoms, the quickest way to do it isn't just to go in and just bomb and blow everything up. Because you, you unite all the people within a country when you do that. If you want to infect change, if you want to cause change, you infect the minds of the citizens. You get them to turn on the people who are in power. It's a very underhanded tactic, but it's something that, you know, our government's done. We try to do regime, regime change. I mean, we plant, you know, plants and everything there and you know, have people who turn the governments against people. I mean, it's, it's not something that's uncommon. It's a very uh, common war tactic. I mean, I can't remember the exact law, but it's one of the things in the 48 laws of power as well as the art of war about that. So, I mean, this is... This is good, man. This is good. And I like how everyone, when they start booing, they're like, you know, I can't stand that Rebecca. Stab her. I'm going to impale her. And it's just like everyone is coming after Rebecca. It's Rebecca against the world. And I love it, man. I love it. And it, it, it's more fitting when you consider the fact that, like, when she was growing up and she's on the run, toy soldier, it's just like, I'm always going to be there for you. Every morning, I'm going to leave a flower petal at your window to let you know that I'm here. Wherever you are, I'm going to do it, which explains why he, in the morning with Frankie, he had Frankie do the detour, and he just dropped the flower petal there. Now that makes sense because Rebecca sees him like a father figure. You know, she goes from I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, like a young kid who doesn't know any better to as she starts growing up and maturing. You know, you got these creeps around the corner, probably trying to say, sell her into slavery, you know, sex slave or something. And toy soldiers comes in, guns blazing, shooting people up like an overprotective father and everything. And he's like, hey, like, I'm going to teach you how to fight. Man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. Like, I get why her mom was like, oh, you can't harm people. But, you know, that's like if I have a daughter, right? Like, if I have a daughter, the moment she gets old enough to start walking and talking and interact with people and everything. I'm going to put her in karate and all these other things. Like, it don't matter if she's in the gymnastics and all that stuff. She's doing karate, too. Like, she's doing that. She's learning to protect herself. I'm teaching her to box myself something. You know, because people are crazy out here. And that's what the toy soldier was doing. And with Thunder Soldier, you know, you don't actually see the training. But I think that's more so because Oda spent a lot of the flashback developing Rebecca's character and giving you a reason to root for, to see Thunder Soldier's reaction when Rebecca says, I hope one day we can live together. And he's like, hey, we got to uphold the laws. You know, right now we can't be together. And, you know, and, and maybe, and maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just kind of going backwards on this a little bit. Cause I mean, that's just like what, you know, if just to use myself, like, you know, I'm in the South, man. I'm in the South, and, you know, if you just go back to a few decades ago, like, marriage is like with what happened with, you know, some of my relatives. You know, marriage is like with my grandmother's, uh, not my grandmother, my grandfather's uh, family, right? Like, marriage is like that would have been illegal. You know, like, my, my grandfather was, uh, my grandfather was mixed, his father was mixed as well, but the mother was a French woman. And during that time, you know, anybody who was considered to be black couldn't get married to anybody who was white. Couldn't get married to anybody who was white. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's still, you know, some frowning upon. It's something that, like, when I grow out with my girl and everything, it's something that you do see. You do feel it. And it's always been like that. Anytime I dated anybody who happens to be white, you know, you always get a little bit of people looking. It's the older generation. It's not necessarily from my generation or anything, but it's just like there's a little bit of pause there. And it's because it wasn't that long ago. And so when I see Rebecca and what she's been through, the thing that really just resonates with me is the fact that she has a strength to stare it all in the face. She has the strength to stare it all in the face and say, fuck it, I'll take all of you on. And so when you look at the Thunder Soldier, you know, he's trying to turn everything over. He's trying to be that revolutionary figure who brings down the Doflamingo family and unites the toys, the people who were 
essentially humans, but turned into toys and kept away from their loved ones and had their memories erased from their loved ones' minds. He's trying to fix all that. It wouldn't surprise me if this Thunder Soldier ends up being her father. Because it's just, it, it's just the way it's being painted. And like when they're being snowed on and everything, you know, he's holding her hand. He's doing a lot of stuff that a father would do for a kid to maintain that innocence. And then once he realizes she's been through a traumatic experience, he does what I feel a father should do, where you basically tell the kid, like, hey, I'm not always going to be there for you. You got to learn to take care of yourself. And that's like a parent's number one goal. You want to shelter your kid from the world, but at the same time, you got part of your responsibility as a parent is you have to get your kid ready for the real world. And in Rebecca's case, you know, she was going to be hunted for the rest of her life. It would have been irresponsible if you never taught her to defend herself. And so it's going to be really cool just to see how skilled she is with a sword, man. It's going to be really cool to see that. But you know, I want to know what you guys think. You know, what were your thoughts about Rebecca after this chapter? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video, guys. Have an awesome day.